Hey everybody, Aaron Blades here. It is September 10th and we are on Lightbox today. We are super excited. And uh, and I get to do something I haven't done in a while. I get to animate for you guys live. And uh, so we are really, really excited about all that. And uh, thank you to Bobby Chu and the whole gang over at Lightbox for getting this organized this weekend. It's uh, no easy feat. Um, even when you're not there in person, there's a lot to get done and they've done a wonderful job as usual. And uh, we're really, really appreciative uh, to be involved. So thank you to Bobby Chu and the whole gang uh, over at Schoolism. And uh, I'm going to, today, I'm gonna to do some uh, animation uh, live. I'm gonna animate our character, you know, for the last, well, for the last several years, we've been planning this project. But for the last two months or so, I've been really uh, focused and concentrating on storyboarding and getting, um, getting the pre-production done for our little project called Snow Bear. And, um, and our, our polar bear character, um, he's just growing and growing and growing in personality. I'm really getting, getting to know him uh, more and more the more I work on this project. And it's like that with any animated project that I work on. Um, the longer I work on it, the more I get to know my character. And usually by the time I finish the project, I really know them well enough to start animating them, <laughs> even though I just animated them throughout a movie. But um, but you really do. They become really real, not really. I mean, really, they do. Really but they, real. They become they become real. And uh, and so in my mind, he's a he's a real living, breathing polar bear that I've just gotten to to uh, to create in my mind, and, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And so today, I thought I'd do some really broad animation. He's um, you know, I've I've likened him to me when I was a little kid. He's he's like a He's like a 10 year old kid in the way that he loves to have fun. And, uh, you know, when I was a little kid growing up, I grew up in Florida from about age nine or 10. Uh, but before that, I lived in Vermont. And I remember in the winter times, you know, playing in the snow when I was six, seven, eight years old and, you know, leaping from the roof into snow drifts and <laughs> having a, a, a blast doing that. And I just thought it might be kind of fun having snow bear kind of come up to the edge of this little embankment and leap into the snow so that's what we're going to do today some nice broad animation where i can talk about squash and stretch and timing and all of that but before that we've got some uh we've got some sales to talk about um uh help me out nick because i'm yeah, drawing abs a blank. absolutely if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash light box we've got a bunch of special events going on this weekend uh, first off, uh, our How to Paint Light course and our Acting for Animation courses are both 50% off, so that's a great deal. And in addition, if you use code LBX20, it'll take an additional 20% off this weekend only. And finally, uh, something really cool, we've got a bunch of exclusive signed and numbered prints available uh, this uh, for Lightbox only. So we've got that cool Kara Kara image you did, the leopard, oh, yeah. the leopard in the tree. We've got one of the grizzlies that you did recently, like the profile one, it's really one. And we've got yeah. that, that elf and that bunny image that you did a while yeah. back. And remember, these will be signed. Yeah, signed, signed and, and numbered. numbered. Signed and numbered, and there's 50 each. And when they're gone, they're gone. So you can go to creatureartteacher.com slash lightbox and check them out. We've also got unsigned versions available as well, um, you know, in case they go too fast uh but but check it out but there will be only 50 signed versions of each exactly yeah yep thanks for that because i was i was so my head so into a uh, snow bear i couldn't remember the sales that we had going on today so um uh so as usual we've got dustin here on my right and uh Hi. and we've got Hello. nick over on the other animation desk and those guys are going to be fielding questions and uh and we're really uh, the other thing i want to mention uh um we have to go uh get COVID tests when we're done here today to prove that we don't have it because we're getting on an airplane on Sunday and we are flying to Kenya. The Mas uh, we are heading off to the Maasai Mara in Kenya, which is the northern end of the Serengeti. And uh, um, we're going to be hanging out for 10 days with lions and leopards and cheetahs and elephants and hippos and rhinos and all kinds of great stuff. It's so one of our favorite places in the world, and Dustin's never been. I've never been, and I've been wanting to for the longest time. Yeah, yeah. So, so. I cannot wait. So we are pretty excited. So uh, we're gonna be go we're gonna go for a couple of hours today, 
and uh, um, let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing I've done is I, I went in and I drew this little layout, this little, you know, the stage for our, our character to act in. And you can see our bear is up in the lower or in the upper left of the screen. And I set him back just a little bit because I want him to take a little, a couple of little steps up to the edge, look over, get a smile on his face and kind of get into position and dive into the air and do a big flop right into the snow. So, um, so why don't we go ahead and get started? The first thing I want to do is go ahead and get him to walk up, walk up to the edge. So uh, that's the living on the edge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was so funny. I, I, I was just finishing. Your voice came in just as I was finishing, and I, you like threw your voice. It sounded like it was coming from the other room. It was weird. Uh, so here we're gonna do this. I'm gonna create a new, uh, new drawing. Can you see the uh, the onion skin? Can you uh, see that? Yes. Okay. I want to make sure people at home can see it. Uh, I, I can make it a little bit darker. There cool. we go. A little bit of a yes. lag for people me, can, so I can't people tell. People can see it. Right. Okay. Uh, will we be uh, streaming in any form in uh, Kenya? We, we are, are going, going to try. try. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's all right. No, we are we are definitely going to try. Okay, so I've got this is uh, the green is the onion skin. That's where uh, he's starting from, and I'm going to draw now where I want him to end up. And I'm going to have his head kind of up a little higher like he's peeking over. How many hours per week should you uh, spend to make progress in your drawing? Um, as many as it takes. You know, I get that question a lot. And it really, there is no set number. It's just whatever it takes. You know, I, I as an artist, and with what I do, I just, I love to draw. And so it was never a matter of, you know, how many hours do I have to spend to do this? I just did it because I loved it. And just approach it that way. Just draw, draw when you want to draw. You know, if you draw when you want to draw, and it should be a fair amount, then you won't have any problem. What type of light box are you using? I'm not using a light box right now. If you look at, um, go ahead and give them, give me a full screen on there. Right here. Yeah. No, no, I mean, put me on full screen. I'm sorry. Oh. Right, so they can see what I'm using. Uh, shoot, I wish I had the camera. Here, let's turn your camera. There we go. So this is what I'm using. I'm using a, <laughs> what? It's slick. Oh. I'm using a, uh, a Cintiq. Hi, Nick. <laughs> so, yeah. so you can see I, um, I use and I use a large Cintiq. I think the person is asking what what light box you're using because the light box and the title. I don't think they understand that it's an actual. actual yeah, this is this is called TV paint that I'm using. And so it's not it's not a light box. It's actually I am drawing digitally. But we're but this is actually part of an event called the Light Lightbox Expo. Oh 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 oh. Well yeah okay. I yeah, thought that, they were talking about that's my... that they they were asking like what kind of light box you're using because they don't realize that we're actually part of the Light Box Expo. Right? Gotcha. So, well there you go. Well, there you go. Dustin just cleared it up. So hopefully this is big enough. You see, and uh, I'm using the 2B pencil setting brush and TV paint. I uh, I find that it's really great. Uh, it feels like a pencil. Looks like a pencil. For all intents and purposes, it's a pencil. 
It looks like Eric Bay just hopped in and says, Hi, Nick, uh, what's the light box coupon code again? LBX20. 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 So I'm going to be doing this, uh, I, I, especially when I have mechanics that I have to do like this. Um, so there you go. That's the position I have to get him to. I'm going to actually, I'm going to stretch his neck a little bit. I'm going to straighten it. Uh, is it expensive to go to Kenya? Um, it's not cheap, depending on where you're going from. And, and, uh, but I mean, you can, you can get safaris depending on, you know, where you go. I mean, but I've seen them as little as 1500 to $2,000 for a week and then you have to get yourself there as well okay so there we go so there's the drawing of him kind of getting up to the edge so I'm gonna move him that's one of the great things see how easy it is I can you know, back in the day if I drew a character I'd have to cut him out and repeg him and here I just instantly moved him. I want to get him right close to the edge But I don't want to get him so far that it's going to take. Uh, oops, let me do this. Scissors. What is that? I don't know what I just did. I mean, these tools have changed. Cutting tool, rectangle. Oh, cutting tool freehand. That's what I want. Whoa. Okay, I just want to move it. I don't know what I'm doing here. The, the tools changed a little bit from the last version. Oh. Somebody's got a phone call. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it there. So. I've got him starting right here. Got him coming up right here. And you can see my, my drawing that comes after the current drawing is purple. The drawing that comes before the current drawing is green. So there you go. So that's where I want him to, I want him to move into that position before he does his jump. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So I'm gonna move my other drawing over. I'm gonna put a drawing there uh, and, oops. I'm gonna do this then. Do that and bingo I got a, a, a third drawing so now you can see with the onion skin I've got the drawing before the drawing after so I want to put one in between I want to have his head come down twitch question what yes. would you suggest beginners to use as a guide to start drawing animals Say that one more time. What would you suggest beginners use as a guide to start drawing animals? I don't know if they're meaning a book or, or what. But just, I would say draw from life. You know, just draw from life. Oh, let me see here. There we go. Just, uh, you know, draw, I, I would suggest, you know, start drawing your, your pet, draw your cat, draw your dog. Um, anything like that's going to help. Ooh, bless you. Get that head down here. Pull it in a little bit. Can I work as an animator or uh, draw comics if I live in Russia? Can I work over the internet? I'm sure. I mean, every that's becoming the standard now, right? So, I would say absolutely.
So here I'm having him step forward like so. There we go. I'm thinking his, his other paw will be up by now. I'm getting placed here, like so. You start to see those mechanics. YouTube question. Uh, YouTube question. What's the best way to animate several characters moving in the same shot? I always take the dominant character and start with that character. Whoever is driving the scene, who's driving the shot, and start with that character. That's how I do it. Now, the other way I can do this is just per uh, him. I think it's too far, so I'm gonna. There we go. There's the other front foot. It's back here. How long will Snow Bear be when it's finished? We're hoping to be about eight to eight and a half minutes. Doesn't sound like much, but when it's just when it's just uh three or four guys working on it it takes it takes a while for us it's been mainly i think the biggest uh uh time time uh suck has been um getting story right even for something that's only eight minutes long i really really want to make sure that story is strong and it really comes down to a lot of times simplifying over time, a story can get more complex. We've been finding a lot in our, you know, which is something that happened when we were doing features as well, is you find yourself going back to original ideas um, when you first started. I and mean, we've had a fair amount of that in this project as well. But that's just par for the course. You know, we have a, it's, pr it's part of the process. We have a, a saying, you know, trust the process. And it is, it's something you have to go through in order to, for it to, to, to happen, basically. All right, so I'm starting to step forward, and I got this little bob in the head where the head comes down. Will it still be emotional? Oh, yeah, I hope so. If I don't make oh, yeah. you cry, if I don't make you cry, then I failed. If I don't make you laugh, then I failed. Emotional means laughing, too. So, you know, hopefully we'll have the whole gamut of emotions in there. It's going to be fun, though. It's mostly fun. Now, so what was, the, uh, what was the last unusual thing you gained uh, art inspiration from? The last unusual thing I gained art inspiration from? Like, what was the most... What was the thing that made you go, huh? You know, I get, it's hard to say because I get inspired by everything. You know, I'm always looking around and observing and I get inspired by a lot of different things. But what was the weirdest thing? What's the unusual one that made you, that inspired you? Um, I don't know. I, I, I can't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, Cause I'd never think of it as an unusual. I mean, I used to I used to collect roadkill, dead animals on the side of the road because I was inspired to draw their their anatomy, and that's how I learned animal anatomy by picking up dead animals off the side of the road. That yeah, could be kind of weird. weird unusual. <laughs> yeah, I think that qualifies. <laughs> and uh, you know, we had a freezer that had that was was really full of dead animals i myself am strange and unusual <laughs> what that what's that quote from i can't remember beetlejuice beetlejuice oh say it one more time
Isn't that three? Oh, you said it too. Oh. Yeah. So, from a mechanic standpoint, he's going to start with his back leg. His back, rear, his rear, right leg. And so that foot's going to come up. Uh, are you uh, animating the ones or twos? Probably it'll be a combination of ones and twos. So in this in this first section, it's going to be on twos. But I'll probably just get it down to like fours at this point. People in the comments are saying that Lightbox's website keeps crashing because there's so many uh, people on it right now. Oh, boy. Oh, really? Yeah. Not our website. We're up and running. No, just Lightbox in general? Yeah. Same thing happened last year, if I remember. Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, dear. So he's coming forward, walking forward that with that back leg first. Head coming down. I'm, uh, I'm animating in 4K as well, by the way. That's why I'm able to get some nice detail in there. Someone said, you should say Beetlejuice three times and Candyman five times and have them fight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we'll say Bloody Mary and have her, yeah, Mary. have her referee while we're at it. Bloody Mary was the one when I was a kid. Me too. We actually went into the bathroom, I remember, in my elementary school and, and did it. And you're still here to tell the tale? Oh, boy, what an adventure that was. <laughs> So here he is. Let me turn the onion skin off so you can see a little better. So he starts with that back leg, steps forward. So we just got to get the other two legs in as he settles into place. Just got to, you know, I want this smooth motion with the head coming up. But we got to get the mo the mechanics right with the feet. And he's starting to get the, the walk is going to start with those back feet. So let's go ahead, let's turn this back on. Get another drawing in here. Uh, any advice for someone who wants to make their own animation or comic with certain animals but will be unable to draw them uh, from life and travel? To see them in person in any future or maybe ever so like is it possible to use references from videos or photos yeah i would use videos use as much video as you can use photos as a last resort video what? is your next best resource beyond you know actually being able to be there what tips do you recommend uh to keep your proportions uh the same through the movement you know, it really is, it comes down to just really being aware of it. And, and then it's also in the design of your characters and the construction. You know, if you have simple construction, you know, even a character that seems complex on the outset, you can design it simply. Have simple shapes that build up something that has more co complex uh, um, Finish, I guess, is the best way to say it. And um, so, yeah, make sure that. There we go. <clears throat> make sure that your design is, um, uh, you know, something that you can draw over and over. You know, you know, Snow Bear is this very simple kind of fluid. He's like the pear. He's he's got a ball on the end, and this fluid pear shape like this with anatomy you know built in there so think of you know whatever it is that you're drawing 
Think of it in simple terms, and you should be good to go. And then, you know, like I said, you just got to, you got to, you have to make, force yourself to double check and recheck your, uh, your proportions. So here, now the other foot should be up. I need really see it. <clears throat> Any advice on drawing fantasy creatures in motion so that they still move in a believable way? Yeah, study study uh, real life animals. That's the best advice I can give you. You got to study, you know, the real thing. And um, you know, when you understand. You know how an insect moves, and how a a, a a you know a four-legged a quadruped moves, or you know any of those. When you understand that, it's going to open up the door for you for a lot of other fantasy type creatures. I'm trying to get him just. Pushed right here. There we go. I turn this off. There, nice slow little movement. Got a thigh muscle in there. I hope everyone's enjoying Lightbox. We've been madly trying to get things done so that we can not only participate in Lightbox but also get ready to get on an airplane on Sunday. Yeah, we should also mention that in addition to going to the Lightbox website, which is having some hiccups right now from what I understand. You can also go to creatureartteacher.com slash lightbox and you can see our schedule for the next three days there. So we're doing three events as part of Lightbox. We've got today's live stream. We've got a video uh, tomorrow on how to paint light. And I say we, Aaron. Um, and and uh, on Sunday, we're doing animation in Procreate over on Procreate's channel. So, uh, with sure. another snow bear. Yeah, with more sure. snow bear animation. So, be sure to check that out. But it's how to animate and procreate. And uh, that is on Sunday. Uh, Sunday, if, Sunday, again, Sunday. Again, if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash lightbox, you can see the uh, Aaron's complete schedule. Plus, we've got some limited edition prints. Uh, that are only available till they're sold out. Uh, we've got uh, some specials this weekend only, 50% off some of our courses. And if you use code LBX20, you can take 20% off any order. So there you go. Bingo. Bingo. Love it. So in this final pose, he's just going to settle into the pose before he decides to kind of jump in. <clears throat> like I said, he's a lot. I always kind of take his enthusiasm like mine when I was a, a little kid up in the snow. Did you get much snow in Baltimore or in uh, Maryland, Nick, where you were? You know, it really varied from year to year. We would have years where we would get dumped on and then like, you know, like blizzards and stuff. And then we would have years where we'd, the whole winter, we'd get like an inch or two. You know, yeah, we weren't Maryland's just kind of that whole Maryland, Virginia, you're 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 north enough that snow is an issue from time to time. But usually you're getting sleet and like sleet and freezing rain and stuff like that. Yeah. So here there's not much going on with the other foot because it's just it doesn't move forward very far. You notice I'm a little closer to the finishing pose. When I am to the last pose. 
It might be a little small. Hopefully it's not too small on your screen wherever you're watching, but um, this is the most comfortable size I can get. I guess I could go a little, a little bigger. Yeah. I guess I could go bigger. There we go. Does it ever make you sad that 2D animation is not done as much anymore? Um, no, because I, I don't feel like, I don't, I think it is done, it's not done in, on a feature uh, level like it used to be, but I think it's going to make a comeback. I'm actually more excited about 2D animation than I am sad, because I think um, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for different types of 2D animation to come along, and, you know, I think back in the 90s, in the early 2000s, it was getting was getting a little repetitious to be honest with you i think it's, it was beautiful but i think we're ready for something new you know the whole broadway musical um template was great for back then and i i think it's still a great template but i think we're all looking for something different so i'm more excited than i am sad yeah so if I put these all on eight, eight, let's see here. And then let's say 24. So the timing on this, if I play it, Actually, that's playing a little too slow because I think I've got it too big. Let's play it again. Nah, it's still a little slow. I'm going to put those back on fours. Let's cut everything back on fours. Still have that on 24. Good question, Aaron. I'm working on a series for my YouTube channel called Monster Wars, and keep in mind, I'm still new at an animation. I want to know how long does it take to make one 10 minute episode? Uh, it depends on, on your complexity. You know, I've been working on Snow Bear. I've been working on the Snow Bear uh, short um, for a couple of years now, trying to get it ready. Now, granted, I haven't been working on it every day, but um, it's only eight minutes and it's, you know, I'm figuring it's going to take about a year to do eight minutes when we, when, once we get it started. It all depends on what level of production that's just, quality. That's just one character. Yeah, right. it's one character with, um, you know, with props and things like that. Now, it also de it depends on the degree of, of the type of animation. Are you going to do full animation on ones and twos? Are you going to have, you know... Miyazaki is a master of doing fours and sixes and eights even and, and making it still feel full. So there's different ways of, of doing that. So here we have him stepping forward very simply. Still don't think it's not playing at the right speed. I feel like it's playing slow. Super slow. Yeah, let me see if it's because the whole window's this big. How do I get it? Uh, how do I get it to come out of full screen? Hit escape. That's what I thought. I'm hitting escape. It's not doing it. Uh, put your cursor all the way to the top. Then. All the way oh, to the top. there we go. Okay. The program you're currently using is a TV paint. Yes. So let me just shrink this up really quick just to see because it's playing back a little bit slow. So because I'm playing at, at a 4K and I have a much bigger screen, uh, it's the the processing strength. It, it, your processing strength goes up or has to go up. And sometimes it's, no, there you go. See the difference? So it was the window. Yeah, I'm going to see if we can find a way to 
and fix that in the future. Yeah. Uh, was the background for this, this is a Twitch question, made uh, uh, directly in TV Paint or did you do it in Photoshop? I made it in Photoshop. Yeah, TV Paint will let you import PSD files and export yeah. PSD files and all that. As will Procreate now as well. So, so I'm going to put these back on H now that I have it playing at the right speed. Will you ever get Bryn Metheny or Terrell Whitlatch to do a course for your site, or at least do a live stream with them? Yes. T definitely Terrell Whitlatch. Um, she um, she has a, a, agreed to do one with us, so yep. at some point. You just got to get it get it done. Get it on the calendar. got to get her done. Get her done. How long does it take you to animate a typical shot? A typical shot, um, something like what we're doing here today. See, that, that's why, that having it on eights, that's the right speed right there, him slowly stepping forward. That's what it should have been reading like before. Um, something like this would take me a, a day, two days, to, to do all the animation if I wanted to uh, have it full, all the in-betweens. It would take uh, probably five hours. Today, we're not going to get all of the drawings, but we're going to get a few of them, quite a few of them. So I'm going to very quickly go back through before we move forward. And um, I'm going to... Uh, blow this up. Did you say that I'm if you're a member to Creature Art Teacher, you get... A discount on TV Paint. Sorry if I sorry if you answered it already. Yes, you get a discount on TV Paint. Yeah, in fact, I think it's just a little shy. If you become an annual member, I think it's it depends on what version of TV Paint you get. But uh, I think at the top end, it's almost like forty percent off. It's really a good discount. Basically, the discount on TV Paint, the membership pays for itself. Exactly. I think the discount is as much as the membership. Or close to it, anyway. And I, you know, if 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 you're serious about animation, I really recommend one of the major uh, animation software. So many people are wanting to find, you know, software for free, which is fine, but you're not going to be able to, you know, that only will get you so far. And um, you know, the best stuff you got to pay for. That's just how it is. And um, and so whether or not you go with Toon Boom or uh, Harmony Toon Boom or, or TV Paint, which I use and I recommend, I love, um, you know, think about investing in those. I'm just having them I'm just breaking it down now. Uh, did you get to record Armand's uh, course last weekend? We did. Yes, Nick did. There's still some more uh, pickup shots we're going to do. It's going to be a great course. Uh, really happy with how it's coming together so far. Really, really great show. We've got a great show for you here tonight. Oh. You said three people are working on a snow bear. What are their roles? Well, right now, it's uh, mainly been Nick and I. And Nick's responsibility up to this point has been basically story and then facilitating anything else that we need to, so kind of a producer role. And Dustin's going to be painting on it, whether he knows it or not. Get it credit. 
you know, but it's kind of a, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of responsibility. The dots is going to be painting on it. It's going to be all hands on deck when it comes to painting. Here we come forward here. Oh, the cicadas are loud today. And we can place his foot. Will you be coming out with the TV paint course? It's hard to find good classes that teach how to use the software. If you go to my website or my YouTube channel, I've got several videos on how to use TV paint. In fact, if you open TV paint up and go to their help, it takes you to our YouTube videos. Here, what I'm having him do as the as the back foot comes in to replace the front foot, I got to pull that front foot out of the snow, pull it up by the elbow. Going to drag it through the snow a little bit. Just like that. There. goes coming forward and really you know to keep track of the mechanics you just gotta you really gotta picture it in your head what what you know you gotta see that movement happen in your head and then break it down in your head so I turn this off It's simple, and that's the thing. You want it to feel simple. You want it to feel very naturalistic. See how that back leg initiates and it forces the front leg to walk forward. And then everything else kind of happens in a chain reaction behind that. So I, well, it's too big right now. It's going to play slow. There, see that? Let's get another one in there. I'm going to turn on the onion skin. <clears throat> Here. Here I'm having him just put his paw right into the snow. Got any tips on any chair or any, uh, sorry, got any tips or any chairs that you recommend or any sort of to help with back problems while sitting down for long periods of time? Well, once again, it's not cheap. And, you know, one thing that does help is, you know, Nick has the, up in the desk that goes up and down where you can stand. That helps. Um, I have Herman Miller chairs. Those aren't, they aren't cheap, but for my old man back, um, I never have any problems. 
Uh, the chairs are about $1,400 a piece. So like I said, they're not cheap at all, but I, you know, this is my living and I'm in this, I'm sitting about eight hours a day. And, um, and so I need something really comfortable. I, I think you can probably find a, most people could find a chair that offers the same level of support possibly for less, but I think the most important thing is finding a comfortable chair that gives you a good posture, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's, whatever the chair is, it's... Whatever it is. For me, that that's what I've had the, you know, we Disney always had Herman Miller chairs for us, and we just, I've always had it, and for 30 years I've been using these chairs, and I just love them. And I've always, you know, found them very comfortable and I never have any back problems. But, you know, it's something that costs and not everyone can do it. But if you can save up for it, make it a goal, it's worth it in the long run because you're saving your back. Yeah, a comfortable desk and a comfortable bed are something that you don't want to cut corners on. Yeah, you I spend mean, so much of your life in them. Yep. Exactly. So I'm trying, I'm trying to remember the arcs too. You know, you want to think about arcs. So I want a nice smooth arc with this head coming down and back up again. So as the head comes down, it arcs up. See there? Oop. Do you like the Animator Survival Kit book by Richard Williams? I love it. Richard Williams was a genius. He was an he's, absolute genius. He's one of the best of all time, right? Yeah, he really was. I, I so regret never having got to meet him. He really embodied the spirit of, of the animator, of an animator. You know, he was 80, how old was he? 80 something when he passed. And still was like a child when it came to talking about animation. How excited he would get. Get that fur coming down. So we're going to place that other foot. That back foot coming right into the snow. And the Front paw coming forward here. It'd be great to see Aaron on Andrew Tischler's Creative Endeavor podcast one day. Haven't you? Was that when you were on already? I'm not sure. I know that one. Maybe not. Don't know. Andrew Tischler. That eye is way out of whack. Do you think that our tools like big tablets and stuff are a big help for animators and artists or is it all about talent and practice? Well, I don't think the tools make you a better animator. Just like having a better, you know, they can as far as, you know, giving you some ease. But, you know, the way I, you know, I could give, you know, somebody all the best 
tools to build a house, but it doesn't not mean that they're not. It doesn't mean they're going to be able to build a build a house. So it does come down to you know practice and learning and and you know so you can put the best foot forward using those tools. So here we go, having them step forward. See that? So that's how you get it to feel naturalistic. Just think about those mechanics. Now, if you see a dog, you know, stepping forward, a lot of times they will drop their head down like that before they bring it back up. Now think about all those different things. And, and it also makes it more interesting, see? Get one more in here. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you are keeping snow bears' feet planted and not looking like they're slipping as you move the body forward? I'm make I'm I'm being sure to do just that. I'm making sure that they don't slide. I'm looking, especially using when I'm using the onion skin. I can tell where the foot was planted before. And so when I when I draw, I can make sure that it doesn't move. And I'm imagining it. I'm imagining them, the feet being several inches under the snow as well. And you got to take that into account. Just like that, see, I'm, I'm drawing his foot planted in the snow in the same place. Hey, Dustin, are you awake? Yes, I am. How are you doing? Very quiet in the chat. What's that? It's just very quiet in the chat. Oh, gotcha. Because I wouldn't think you'd be sleeping. Mm -mm. No, there's no way. Impossible. A question from uh, Thomas Gonzalez Jr. Uh, have you experimented animating in different frame rates other than 24 frames per second? Yeah, and I've, you know, I've tried 60 frames, uh, which is really cool. Um, I find it difficult. I make it because I'm so used to 24. My, my animation tends to look like it's underwater. Um, and I've tried slower frame rates too, which are a lot easier. Um, but 24 is always, you know, I've, I've done 24 frames per second for 35 years. And so it, it's, it's hard to think of, of the timing and animation any differently for me. So we almost got them ready to jump. Here <laughs> we are one hour into it. The jump is uh, not going to take a lot of drawings and it's going to be a lot more dynamic. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But I like, I like having something subtle like this to start with and it plays well against something dynamic. You start out kind of contained like what we're doing here. Let's shrink this up. Let's shrink up the image. Unfortunately, I have to make it small like this for you guys to see the animation at the right timing. There's a step forward. Aren't there animators that don't do any artwork at all? They just take the art from the artist and animate it. Uh, that, say that again? I, I don't, I was, I'm not quite understanding <laughs> what they mean either. Aren't there an, animators that don't do any artwork at all? They just take the art from the artist and animate it. No, I, that question makes no sense. You can't be, you can't animate it without doing art. Yeah, that's. I think that maybe they're misunderstanding the process, thinking like they're scanning it in, or uh, you know, maybe no, they're think, maybe to, they're thinking of like cleanup artists, but even then, they're artists, you know. Yeah, and and there's no computer that magically does it. You have to, you've got to be the artist to to input the information. So I mean, there's like puppet animation and stuff, but even that requires you to keyframe where the puppet hands yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. And uh, to the latecomers, what uh, software is this? This is TV Paint. 
TV paint animation. So here's what I've what we've uh, um, animated so far is him stepping up to the edge. Marie on YouTube asks, have you ever tried rotoscoping? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I wouldn't say rotoscoping, but I have used, um, let me put this on twos real quick. I'm going to have them slow down. Live action reference, right? Yeah, I've used live action reference. And um, what? there we go. And, and for me, it's not a matter of just, you don't just follow it verbatim. You you get in there and you you find your key poses through the live action, but then it's up to you to caricature it and push it. I mean, yeah, we we used a lot of live action in uh, Aladdin. Sorry, I cut you off, Jim. Uh, Jim, Nick. I don't know why I just said Jim. That was really weird. Yeah, but Jim, I cut you off, Jim. Never really told you. Um, isn't uh, wasn't there a ton of uh, live action reference for Pocahontas as well? Yes, the whole movie was shot in live action before we actually animated it. So here you can, I've got a little separate timing, a little different timing here. Uh, I've got a mixture of twos, threes, and fours, along with the last two drawings being held for 12 frames and 16 frames. But this feels more naturalistic. He's kind of stepping up to the edge kind of quickly in the beginning. I'm going to keep that timing. I like that timing. And if we had time, we'd go back and add all the in-betweens to make it smooth. But this feels pretty good. I want to remind people that if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash lightbox, you can see Aaron's uh, lightbox schedule for the next three days. And also, we've got some exclusive uh, offers, promos, and sales going on, uh, including if you use promo code LBX20, uh, you can take 20% uh, off any order at the website. So that's all our Photoshop brushes, membership even, all that. There you go. Bingo. Bingo. Uh, Dustin, what camera equipment are you taking to Africa? Uh, more likely the same equipment that I took to Montana. So we're taking my uh, Sony Alpha 1 camera uh, along with uh, my 20-75 to 75 in case we're doing any portrait shots. Um, I'm going to try day one to use my 200-600 to see how that works out. But uh, if the animals end up being too close, I'll likely... Uh, switch to the 70 to 200 that I have uh, But in the meantime, whichever long lens I'm not using dad will likely be using on his uh, a9 mark II, right? Yeah and, uh, and then for uh, Like inside the Land Rover. I'll also have my little my little camera my a6400 uh, For more personal portrait uh, photos with the crew Is the aha take on me video an example of rotoscoping? Yes, absolutely. Now that's total straightforward rotoscope. They just basically took the film and drew right over it. Whereas we would take take it uh, on Aladdin or Pocahontas, and that would be a start, but then we would exaggerate it and make it feel more like, you know, traditional two D animation. You know, there's a scene in Aladdin where uh that i animated where uh jazz I, I animated raja but i also helped out and animated some of jasmine and there's a scene there where i um i uh animated her brushing her hair uh, right after she had had her wonderful night with aladdin or prince ali and um and so she's sitting there kind of dreamily brushing her hair and her father walks into the room and she gets up and she puts her brush down and then twirls around and says, Oh, Father, I just had the most wonderful evening or something, something to that effect. And, um, and that was all shot in live action. But I took the, uh, I took the, each, you know, the poses, the key poses from the video and I made them my own. You know, I redrew them in a way that I felt would make it more fluid and, and then, you know, that's how it made it into the film. Uh, is it best to start set, uh, settle, then go into more dynamic animation versus the other way around? 
Um, you know, I think it's easier to understand the concepts when you're working more dynamic. You know, a lot really strong squash and stretch. Um, understanding subtle animation is really about timing as well. And it's all about acting. And a lot of times the subtle animation, people get hung up on the mechanics even in that. And it, and it pulls you back from um, having something that's truly subtle. And uh, so a lot of times it, I, think it, I think it's better to start with a little bit broader um, animation so you can understand, you know, that aspect of it, the squash, the stretch, the, the concepts. And then, and then gradually get more and more subtle. That's how I did it. And it, it seemed to work better for me that way. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm in, I'm getting him in his anticipation pose, which is, you know, the pose that he's going to be in right before he dives out into the air. So I want, that's, this is going to be his anticipation. Uh, when it comes to coloring, uh, will you have to color each frame individually, or does TV Paint have a shortcut to speed up that process? No, you paint each frame individually. There is um, some. Uh, uh, you can have a. a, a you can have in the pro version of, in the pro version of TV Paint. There's a color control layer um, that you can do. And if your lines are completely tight and perfect and da -da -da -da, it'll fill in from frame to frame to frame. The problem is, is that only works like in very specific instances. Yeah, so, and you have to do it one frame at a time still. And you still, you know, you, you have to touch it and, and it'll fill. Right. Um, but uh, there's no automatic painting, you know, at all. No, nothing like that. So you can see I've got them kind of coming up and getting ready to jump out. So we're going to want to uh, add some drawings to that. So I'm going to, I'm going to have him step forward again. Uh, any news on in-person workshops for this year or next? Not really, because we're really waiting to see what happens with COVID. There's some things that we want to do. We want to be in Europe again. We want to do... We really want to do something in the Northeast. Um, Nick and I were just talking about it today. Yeah, that's um, one area where we've re never really. Yeah, just in the Northeast here in the United States, where we haven't really done much. Um, well, like Maine? No, 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 like New York. Uh, and and high, some of the higher, concept, you know, higher population areas. And um, so, you know, we're looking at doing that kind of stuff. But I also want to get back, you know, to international travel as well. Um, this trip to uh, Kenya is kind of breaking the ice for that for us. So here I have him once again starting with that back leg, stepping forward. Here he steps forward, stops, and then he's going to come right to that edge before he leaps out. Hi, Aaron's. Uh, what's the difference between full animation and limited animation? Limited animation comes down to a lot of times you're doing holds on different parts of the body. Let's say the head isn't moving very much while the character is talking. And so they'll, they'll put a, a hold on a big part of the head and then only animate like the facial features while they're talking. And that's, that's an example of limited animation. Or um, another example is, you know, there's 24 frames per second in the, in a, uh, when it, when the, you know the film goes through the camera, and when we animate in full animation, a lot of times we're doing a, a different drawing for every frame, or at the very least we're doing one drawing for every two frames. 
With limited animation, you might be doing a drawing for every six frames or every four frames or every eight frames. So it's a way to do less drawing and, uh, and still tell the story, and, but you know, save money. Not always, but sometimes, um, you know, anime or Japanese anime is would be a good example of limited animation. Yes. By you know, sometimes as a stylistic choice, you know, they'll they'll hold they'll be animating only part of the the screen. Yeah. Well, another thing too is that they you know anime tends to be really effects heavy, mm -hmm. and so it's a way to to get you know more effects in. Uh, for a lesser amount of money. And limited animation doesn't mean it's any less beautiful either because I, you know, using anime as an example, um, I've seen some amazing uh, anime that's just st stunning pieces of art. And, uh, completely limited. Have you ever done an animated fight scene? Uh, yeah, I mean, I did did some fight scenes with uh, Yao and, and the Gang of Three in Mulan. So right now, the other thing that I'm, I'm doing is I'm not really thinking about the timing. I know that I have to have, I have to have these positions in the, uh, where the legs are. So I'm not really thinking about the timing yet. I'll go back and time them out afterwards. Did you see Riot and the Last Dragon, and what did you think of it? I loved it. I did see it, yes. And I had some really good friends that worked on it, and I was really happy for them. So I'm trying to get through this quickly because I'm realizing we're an hour and 17 minutes into it, and we haven't even gotten to the jump yet because we're working on getting that in. That anticipation. That's the thing, you know, you want to, that's one thing I want, actually, this is a good example because um, you might ask somebody to animate a new animator to animate a jump and they'll forget about that, all the, the anticipation, all the animation that has to go in before the character actually jumps in order to make the jump feel believable. Go. <clears throat> Let me draw this out. What kind of music do you like to listen to when you draw? Um, I like a kind of chill tempo kind of stuff. Just kind of electronic chill music or blues or 70s because that's my era when I grew up. Um, I like a lot of different stuff. Now, do you clean everything out before you animate? Yes. In this case, this is a simple um, movement. So uh, I'm not, I'm just animating straight ahead. But usually I will thumbnail and plan everything out ahead of time. Yes, absolutely. And I recommend everybody do that. Always. 
the force with me always with you, always. There we go. And let's get this other foot up in the air. Actually, he's going to come forward with it. Gonna have him drag it right through the snow. Looks like that. If you were a ninja turtle, hold on. If you were a ninja turtle, which one would you be? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know Ninja Turtles. That was my own question. I just <laughs> I just wanted to see what you do. I would be Leonardo. Good choice. That'd be the one I'd go for it too. That's correct. You win. <laughs> yes. There's this kid on TikTok. I always, I know I watch TikTok. There's this kid on there that's always asking people really easy questions, geographical questions, just to show the stupidity of our of our society. You know, how many? What's three times three times three? Or what's uh, uh, you know, how many continents are there in the world? And uh, no matter what they answer, he goes, "Yes." <laughs> just moves on. Yes. When you're working on a feature film, how does the process go? Do you get a storyboard section and go from there? How do you connect with the other animation shots? Well, as an animator, yes. Yeah. So you sit down with, uh, let me say, well, I'll talk about the process. The process is um, you, the writer, director, you know, kind of hash it out in the room first. And, uh, and then the writer goes away, writes script pages. Then those script pages are assigned to a storyboard artist and the storyboards are done. Once those are approved, which is a whole other issue, once those are approved, then, um, then they get issued to an animator and also to layout. Well, actually they get issued to layout first because layout has to figure out the backgrounds. And then uh, once the backgrounds are des designed and, and, and figured out from the storyboards, then they're handed off to the animator and background painter. And this is in 2D uh, animation. And um, uh, and what what we would do in, in uh, issuing sessions, where you sit down with the animator and say, here are the storyboards. Um, you know, this is the action that we want to have to take place. Um, if you come up with a better idea, let's talk about it. And that was always something that we could do. Um, and then uh, the other thing, too, is if there's already been animation done around the shot that you're working on, it's your responsibility to go find that animator and find those drawings to make sure that the, the hookups, meaning, you know, the first drawing uh, and last drawing match from the shots around them. I mean, so often we'd have animators that wouldn't pay attention and wouldn't uh, check the shot before and after. And you have a cut and all of a sudden it, it, it doesn't match at all because the animator didn't do his whole homework. So you want to make sure that you do your homework before you sit down. And then, then it's a matter of thumbnail, thumbnailing the scene, you know, trying to figure out the, uh, the choreography. And a lot of times you'll sit down and have a meeting with the director before you start animating and after you thumbnail so that they can improve the choreography. And then from there you, uh, you get started, start animating. Aaron, I wanted to let you know that when you had those bigger sales last year on your animated tutorials, it really helped me get through in a time of financial stability, which was really hard during COVID. So thank you. You are welcome. And we're in the process of doing more of that. So stick around. We're going to have, uh, as we get closer to the end of the year, 
when we get back from Africa, we have some plans on some, uh, some new stuff coming out, creating some new stuff, uh, especially for um, discounts and, and uh, well, anyway, it, it'll be deeply discounted. Stay tuned. Stay T O O N E D. Also, have you seen Centaur World? The animation is crazy, and I think James Baxter worked on it. Centaur World. James Baxter, that hack? James Baxter is one of the best animators in the world. I wonder if there are people who abuse free transform when animating and don't redraw each frame, but rather use free transform to adjust the previous frame. I think a lot of people do, and they'll regret it. I think a lot of people do. Oh, Centaur World's on... Uh... It's a Netflix cartoon, and yeah, he did work on it. There you go. Cool. It looks a lot like um, just the initial shots. It looks a little bit like uh, the, everything's in that style, like Adventure Land now, or Adventure Time. About what? It looks like what? Adventure Time. You ever seen that show? Oh. If you were a beetle, which one would you be? A Goliath beetle. I always thought you were more of a Ringo. A what? More of a Ringo. A Ringo? Oh. <laughs> I didn't even go to the band. <laughs> I was going to say a dung beetle. Yeah, because we just saw a dung beetle. Already. Yeah, that's why we were just looking at a dung beetle outside. So when you said, which, if you were a beetle... That's funny. I went right to the insect. Uh, is it hard to keep a consistent style on a long film? Uh, how do you manage that as a director with maybe multiple artists? It's hard in the beginning because you got to get everybody on board and it's hard to get everybody on board. You know, we had a very specific style, painting style to Brother Bear. It's very loose and uh, it was really hard to get that consistent with everybody. And when does uh, the voice acting get done in the animation process? Uh, before animation. So once a storyboard has been uh, um, approved, then we'll go and do our recording session with our artists or with our actors. And um, that, you know, it takes a little while. Do you have any uh, opinion about the animation in Procreate? I think it's great for what it is. You know, it's not something you're going to go make a feature with, but it's really cool to, to, to goof around with it and learn animation. And I think you can do some really nice little pieces. And uh, I find it really useful, especially when you're, you know, the fact that you're able to do it just on an iPad. I think it's super cool. It's really strong. In fact... Uh, this Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, which I believe is 11 a.m. Pacific time, uh, Aaron is doing a animation demo in Procreate. Uh, it'll be on Procreate's uh, YouTube channel. You can watch it there, or you can read. Uh, we've embedded it in the page at creatureartteacher.com/lightbox, uh, so you can check it out there. But uh, yeah, so we've got a whole, I think it's a whole hour and a half demo on Animation Appropriate this Sunday. So check it out. Is there any way, Nick, down the road, uh, this is probably a question for offline, but to get this to play at a normal speed when it's blown up like this? Yeah, I actually said earlier during the stream I was going to look into it. Oh, I didn't hear you. Yeah, I, I, we'll try to get that fixed. Because having to shrink it up and... It's pain, man. It's your pain. All right, so we're almost into position, ready to jump. We're going to have some fun with the jump. 
when should you make an animated character blink? You know, that's, that's really, it's a great question because you, first of all, you don't ever want to forget your blinks. Blinks add so much life to your animation. To me, it's when, you know, if they, if their eyes have been open for a while and, and the animation is getting a little static, throw a blink in. It all of a sudden adds a ton of life to your, to your animation. Um, if a character is excited, you know, care, people tend to blink a lot when they're excited. Um, uh, you know, if they're, if they're, uh, being teased or being pursued by somebody, you're going to blink a lot. When animating, would you recommend taking acting classes to learn how to push a character? We took acting classes. Yes, I would absolutely recommend taking acting classes. I took acting classes when uh, at Disney, improv classes, and um, and we we loved it. I would also recommend learning small engine repair, but that's just a general recommendation. It has nothing to do. <laughs> I was going to go to the welding side of things. Yeah, if you can weld, you'll always have a job. My father always said. Do you have any courses available covering animal anatomy as it pertains to animation? Um, well, the, the animal anatomy courses that I have all would pertain to animation because um, even though it's realistic uh, that I'm teaching, uh, it's still you're still going to be tied to realistic animal, animal anatomy in the way that the physiology works if you want to do something believable, even if it's something, you know, cartoony. You know, when we did The Lion King, we were trying to animate real lions, and so we wanted to understand their real anatomy. So in that way, it, it, it lends itself to that, if that makes sense. Turn this off real quick. I'm trying to do a little bit of a shortcut, getting that foot into place. There we go. Let's shrink this up. So you can see he's coming up, looking over the edge, and then, okay, he's going to get it ready. Gets those feet, and very quickly gets those feet into place underneath him. All right. Lots of little arcs, especially in that head. The head grows a little bit at the end of that last pose. That's okay. I'm just going to roll with it. Gonna roll with that punch. Gonna roll with it, baby. How do you avoid exploitation in the animation industry? I recently learned that some animators in Japan only make the equivalent of four hundred dollars U.S. per month. How do you do, how do you decide uh, your worth when applying to a studio? Well, first of all, you're not going to get that in, in the United States. It just doesn't happen. But I mean, it's I think it's, it comes down to what are you willing to do. And, you know, if, if you can afford not to take the job, then then don't take the job. I think there's I think if you look at the the, the union scales, and say, like in Los Angeles, I think those pay rates are fair, but it's hard to it's hard to get those pay rates all the time. But it's, you know, I haven't had to deal with that in a long time because I'm doing what I do and I do everything on my own terms. But I'm, you know, I've spent 35 years getting to this point. What brush are you using in TV paint? The number two pencil. Yeah, I, does that still exist in TV paint? Yeah, number two pencil. Well, yeah. someone said at one point, like, the version you have is actually from TV paint 10 and somehow no, got carried No, I'm using the latest over. version of TV paint. Yeah. yeah. It's right here. I just got it right, right here, come up. And boom, right there, number two, 2B, two 2B two pencil. No, it's like, so it's not number two, it's a 2B pencil. But it's right there, 2B. That's been there from the beginning. And it's a, I mean, look at it, it's a it's pencil. 2B or not 2B? 
That is the question. So now uh, we're going to get kind of uh, we're going to get kind of loose with it. So I'm going to draw this back. Oops. Come on. There we go. We're getting on over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I want to see the top edge because I want to make sure we don't animate off of it. So we've got him at his anticipation. He's come down. Now we're going to have him leap. I'm going to start loosening up with the drawings now because uh, I want to roll through this pretty quickly. Um, but let's go ahead and go to our next drawing. All right here. Let's turn on our onion skin. All right. So, first thing I want to do is I'm going to have him push up. I'm going to push him out right out here. You're going to see a lot of straights happening now. Do you make Do you make any of your own brushes for TV paint? No, I, don't, I haven't really found a need to. I like that number two brush. So I, I just use that. Twitch question. When animating something like this, would adding the weight of the bear claws punching into the snow be necessary? It depends on how much d detail you want to get. I mean, it, wouldn't, it doesn't hurt, but I think that's over, overkill in the detail. So what, what you'll notice now is I'm going to start to bend those back legs. Because he's going to have to spring off from those. You see here? So the back legs are bent. He's pushing. I want to get a nice, strong, straight here. Shoulder blades are here. So if I actually drew through, you'd see the bones coming like that. So I'm going to push that straight even more on the next drawing. Is this animated straight ahead? It is now. <clears throat> we just did pose to pose, basically, leading up to this. Now I'm animating straight ahead. And you'll see, a lot of times when you animate straight ahead, the drawing gets looser. You can see my drawings get a bit looser. There we go. I want that strong oh, right there. See that? See how we're kind of bunched up in the uh, in the in the anticipation drawing? Everything's bunched up in the shoulders. We got all that taut energy all kind of wrapped up in the shoulders and it's going to explode right out to that the straight and we're going to push that even more before we do that i want to go one more drawing and just get one drawing coming out just to just to slow out of the you know you're not going to just ex it's almost impossible to explode that fast in one frame so we're going to do a drawing that's a little closer to our start. There we go. The whole time you, you want to think about the anatomy, even though I'm simplifying things down, I'm still thinking about what's happening in the anatomy in the, under there.
There we go. I just want to give from you. <laughs> Singing Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> Singing Hootie and the Blowfish. Put that on twos. There, now you can feel that push off. Push it. Push it. Push it real good. Now pop it. Boop. Twist it. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> okay, so on the next one, here we go. So I want to keep, keep, I'm going to, I'm going to talk better. <laughs> so I'm going to show a couple drawings back so I can get my arc going forward. So I'm going to really push this. Right here. I'm really cheating it. There we go. Look how long that got. See that? Dirty stretch. It's a hefty stretch. I'm hitting my, uh, I'll bring this down a little bit. Have you ever used a 10B Mitsubishi pencil that Glenn Keane loves too much or so much? No. There is one called the Blaisdell that he used to use that uh, he gave me one once. I don't know. Uh, I love that pencil. I'll have to look into it. Because I always loved all the pencils Glenn, Glenn used. Okay, so he's getting ready to explode off those back legs. Really pushing the, the stretch here. Want to really push that. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Looks like he just disappears See? in the end. What's that? Looks like he disappears in the end, like he just yeah. teleports. But you can see, look how the butt comes down. It goes from, see how the, the, the back legs are straight? But then they compress. As so, I want the front legs to explode and then the back legs to explode. I want them to happen at two different times. Oops. What's that? Mind if I grab a drink? No, go for it. Uh, would you like one? I'm good. I'm going to really stretch these ears, the cheeks. He even close his eyes. Let's close his eyes. I want a nice, strong statement right here. I want to get that straight. All that compression exploding into the straight. Right there, boom. I know it's not perfectly straight, it's bowed, but you get the idea. Because then the next drawing coming up out here. How do you know how much stretching or squashing is too much when animating? Uh, I find that it's usually never too much, especially when you're doing something really fast. Um, you can get away with a lot more than you realize. 
And one thing you always say is you can get away with a ton as long as you keep it within the arcs. As right? long as you stay within the arcs, yep, absolutely. There we go, 20. And once again, I want to get nice straight. The hips are here, really exploding with those hips. And push that chest down. That pelvis is going to flatten out. So you get the belly that comes way down, like so. See there? We've got a nice arc happening. Now we're going to start to see. All of, a sudden, all, all of a sudden now, our front legs are going to come back to something that's a little bit more normal. You can get them to pop like this. Right there. There we go. You got to keep it nice and simple. And right here, I'm really going to push that straight, going right into that back leg. It's something you're not going to really see as much as feel. I know it looks weird knowing that this is a bear, but you just need to do it just for a frame, a couple of a couple of drawings, to get it to do what it's supposed to do, which is make that animation feel more dynamic. I almost said dynamic. Dynamic? Yes. I don't know what that means. Once again, when you get that stretch in the cheeks, his eyes closed, he's jumping into oblivion. Those ears stretched. Look at that nice stretch. Feet coming up out of the snow. Ankles. Pushing right off. Boom, feel that? Oh, push. He's pushing with the front paws first, and then pushing off with the back paws. Let's get him out here. Next drawing. I'll get him a little further out this time. I'm gonna put the spacing a little bit wider. watch let me see I'm gonna jump back real quick here's where you want to make sure your volume stay the same I want to look at that the size of our bear there and make sure it's the same size here this is basically right I'm going to bring the paws right about me here. <clears throat> now, 
Now I can either have them go into a swan dive at this point. Or just belly flop. Or, or uh, I was thinking about having him bring his butt underneath him. He jumps out and then, lay, you know, throws his butt out of, under, and then he lands on his back. That's what I was thinking about doing. Do you recommend practicing drawing a character several times at different angles before actually animating them? Yes. That's what we always did. We always did that. And then, I, then we would animate little test shots to make sure that we were drawing them correctly. There we go. This is still gonna, I'm completely drawing his back wrong because his pelvis has still gotta be turned up, which means you gotta push this part of the back down so that the pelvis can come back which means i got to push this belly down further my eraser i can't get my eraser big enough there we go because the pelvis here's the hip still want his legs pushed back pretty far like this It's pretty much going to be a, you know, just kind of a snap right off the snow. Oh, snap. <laughs> just do that. I could use the other leg to kind of extend the silhouette. There we go. Once again, checking the size, making sure the size feels consistent. I also want to make sure that I'm not animating too far out, which I feel like I am right now. So what I'm going to do because I wasn't paying attention to the right side of the screen, I'm just going to pull him back a little bit. It's right in here. I think we'll be able to get away with it. Yep, right there. Feel that? Boom. Boom. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the next one. I'm going to blow that up a little bit. On to the next image. I'm going to start slowing them down a little bit. I want to get, what I want to do is get the body underneath so I'm going to start bunching them up and let the head slow down and if the head's slowing down that means that energy has to go somewhere else and so we're going to transfer that energy into the body catching up so the back end of the body will be going faster and that's why the head's able to slow down Tony Bancroft is watching and says Aaron Blaze is an amazing animator so is Tony Bancroft Thank you, Tony. Tony Bancroft, who animated Pumbaa. And Tony, Tony says, I remember when Aaron would animate in sandals, and on a good day, he'd even have a shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> on a good day. Truth. But other days, it was just what, a tank top? <laughs> we were just mere pups back then. He says, oh. I... He says, I bet you now that you're a more respectable industry vet, you've probably got, sh you probably lace up your shoes. 
<laughs> and I was, and uh, the answer is no, he doesn't. It's still flip flops. Not the flip flops. So I'm going to get these arms to come out a little bit, like come towards us. So that's a matter of you want to get your foreshortening positions right. So that arm feels like it's coming out towards us at the shoulder. Yeah, Tony. Tony and I, we met uh, 32 years ago, this past April. 32 years ago, Tony. April 17th, 1989. And Martinberg is asking, which is your favorite Bancroft brother? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got Tony on the line, so it's got to be Tony, right? Absolutely. Oh, hands down. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I want to I'm going to I want to gather that energy coming forward. So you'll see how I'm I'm starting to pull his pelvis underneath, and I'm trying to bunch up that all that body mass. Like so. If this is a full grown. Uh polar bear is he jumping 30 feet forward yep because i am the animator and i determine the physics in my world <laughs> this is my world he's super he's super polar bear There we go. See how he's yep, brings his body forward. Watch this. I'm going to have him bring his arms up. Notice how I'm slowing the head down. It's because everything else is going to bunch up. arms up this is where the drawing is going to get a little funky it's going to get a little funky looking because i have to okay get him to do some things here and bring this arm up so when doing shots like this do you always do straightforward animations or do you sometimes do keys and in betweens no when i'm doing this kind of animation i'm almost always going straight ahead but but that might be somebody that's just joining earlier on you did keys and in betweens i did at the slower part of the action so here i'm trying to bunch that body up because he's trying to bring in my mind he's trying to bring those feet forward he wants to get around to land on his back that's what i'm trying to get him to do so i'm getting trying to get the physics to feel right and that's what I'm trying to think of. I'm trying to think of the physics. How would he physically do that? And a lot of it is you're transferring momentum. So he had a lot of momentum up in the front end of his body, but now he's going to transfer it to the back end of his body, which is going to slow up the front end. Twitch question. What's your advice for someone who's struggling on drawing from from more general to more specific because when I draw I tend to get so many details at once that I forget the whole picture and sometimes forget what I was trying to draw and get, frust <laughs> and get frustrated that I focused on so many details in a single thing and never got to draw the entire picture uh, that's a really funny question I um, it's it's just disciplining yourself start start with the broad start with your main shapes and then and then you work towards you got to really force yourself to work from the outside in work from the the broad to the detail you know when you're building a house you don't 
you got to frame it first. You can't just go right to the finish, right? Well, it's the same with the drawing. Oh, we got some funny, fun, funny poses right here, but you're going to see what's going to happen. He's going to kind of swing his arms backwards. That sounds like a funny pose, dearie. See there? Boom. Actually, let's let's see where we're at. Let's shrink it up. We've got to shrink it up. Unfortunately. If we play, see that timing? I love having that kind of timing where he gets ready and, and then he jumps. So what we're going to have him do is he's, I'm going to probably go back and put some twos in here, like right in here. Let's add... There's a two there, and a two there, and maybe a two there. It might be too much. Yeah, you can see that feels like it it wants to slow down in that the arc of that jump. By the way, I don't know if Tony's still joining us or not, but I know that um, him and Tom are doing a lot of events for Lightbox, so make sure that you know people go to Lightbox Expo or check out the Bancroft Brothers. Um, They've got a bunch of stuff going on this weekend, some character design stuff, a whole yeah. lot of things definitely worth checking out. For sure. So there, there's our, our leap so far. Get ready for that anticipation, then jump. Maybe we don't need to have it 20 frames. Maybe we have it uh, 16 frames instead. Jump. There you go. Go ahead and jump. Yeah, we need some uh, Van, Van Halen, Halen playing for this. Yep. All right, so I think he's starting to grow a little bit. Let's look at that pose and that, that last pose. He's starting to grow a little bit. So we got to make sure we... Uh... What is that? That's not the... And transform. There we go. I'll just shrink them a little bit. Maybe turn them a little bit. So I'm going to start to get that butt underneath. There we go. And let's go back to our, our pencil. All right, so how are we doing on time? You've been at it for two it hours. Three o'clock. Yeah, three o'clock. All right. Let's see if I can speed this up. It's time to go ludicrous speed. <clears throat> I didn't get myself enough on the right side. I had him really leap. I might have to go back and adjust some of the 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 uh, spacing. One back here. Yeah, like this one. I think we'll do that. I'll bring it back to here. Boom, just like that. And then the next one, I'm going to bring back to here. See, this is going to allow me to get him to land where I need him to land. And we'll get him right back here. There we go. I think I made him too small. There. All right. Let's get back to it.
Oh, Oops. messed up. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just I, I enlarged the wrong the wrong frame. Uh -uh. There we go. We're good to go now. So now you're going to have him start to come down. Trying to get him to land right in here, right in the snow. Actually, I got to get him to come all the way around. So I'm going to start to bring that body around like this. There we go. Get that whole body shape in there. Now I'm going to get the paws way up in the air, up here. It's almost, I'm pushing what the anatomy can actually do. I'm faking it right here. So you get it to feel like you're doing like a little windmill. You get those paws to come. This is sort of a follow-up question to earlier, but phrased differently. I'm currently working on a fox jumping headfirst into the snow. And I'm working on my squash and stretch, but wasn't sure how far I should take it. Do you have any boundaries with it? Take it as far as you can before it looks like it's wrong. That's my, that's my advice. Push it as far as you can until it looks like it's wrong. And then come back a little bit. Will Ronnie do his own watercolor course for your website? Uh, maybe at some point. Right now there's no plan for him to do that in his plain air painting course which is on our website he does do a little bit of watercolor yes it's not specifically a watercolor class but he, he touches on it quite a bit so so here I'm trying to get his feet forward like this You just got to feel it. If you've ever jumped off an embankment or jumped out off of a bridge into a river, which I used to do all the time, you can feel that momentum that you got to try to get out there. That's what I'm trying to do here. But also do it in a way that's believable with, the, with his arms. I think I'm going to bring those arms down. Oh, this eraser's driving me nuts. I'm going to redraw this a little bit differently. So I feel like I've pushed it too much. There, I'll bring it back here. And the other arm, you're not going to quite see. Boom. Just like so. Here, mm -hmm. if, if I drew his claws in, this is what you'd see. Now, it looks weird, but wait till we get to the next drawing. 
Molly on YouTube says, I've loved the movie Brother Bear since I was a child. Getting to watch Aaron bring a bear to life today is so incredible. So glad to be here. Oh, thank you. Want to let people know who might be joining us late that if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash lightbox, we've got a bunch of um, special sales going on on Aaron's tutorials and art lessons and uh, Photoshop brushes and stuff like that. And uh, we've also got some limited edition signed and numbered prints available uh, that are we just made available today. And when they're gone, they're gone. So uh, check those out. And you can also see Aaron's full light box schedule for today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Um, uh, and then we're gonna be gone to Africa for a couple weeks, so we might not be live streaming while we're there, but we're gonna try uh, if we can get a strong enough schedule. So, yes. But anyway, head over to creatureartteacher.com slash light box because there's some specials going on this weekend only that you don't wanna miss. Here's a, a big transition I'm trying to get to. Like that. So you'll notice it when I'm when I'm struggling to find a pose. Usually when I'm working straight ahead, you'll notice I get really, really loose because I want to, I'm trying to forget about the details of what it is that I'm doing and try to find the pose itself. And here I finally feel like we're finding it. Whoa, see there, he's jumping out. Getting those feet out from out from uh, out from under them. I want him to land back first or butt first or whatever, right into the snow. Go. Get the other paw. We'll just start to see the other paw back there. Now, a bear in real life would have a hard time lifting their arms up that high, but I'm uh, I'm taking creative license. Does the bear have a name? We've been calling him Glenn after Glenn Keane. Because he's not Snow Bear. That's kind of the it's the it's the misguide. When you see it in the when you see it first open and he first comes onto the screen and the title comes up Snow Bear, you think he's the Snow Bear, but he's not. Misdirection. Aaron, I want to ask you something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ask away. Um, when you draw from life, do you draw outside to inside or inside out? I draw, I draw shapes. So however you want to define that. So I look for the big shapes and then I find the details. So neither. Got it. <laughs> There, see how he's jumping out and getting that butt underneath him? Let me turn the, the onion skin off so you can see it a little better. See that? Oh, jump. Like you're jumping into the water. Like, almost like a cannonball. Yeah, and you really got to feel it because it's not, it's this, animating this isn't really intuitive to get that to work right. And that's why I was saying, notice how I'm having to slow the head down so that the body can speed up to go underneath him. And that's where you're pulling the physics out. Look at the arm. The arm almost is stationary when you look at the paw. Because he's trying to get that momentum, getting the butt underneath him. Well, 
Let's go to the next drawing, shall we? On to the next phase. So I'm going to speed them, start speeding them up again. And I don't want to have him go off the page. So I'm going to try really hard to have him hit the snow um, in the right position. Position. I don't think I'm going to have him go any further than this out here. I'm going to also have him start to look up. Here's his shoulder that I'm faking. Actually, I'll pull that up even more. For those of you that might know TV Paint, there's something that, that's happened with the, uh, the eraser mechanism. I used to be able to have a separate eraser from my for my brush now it seems like when i try to erase i have to use the same brush if any of you know differently let me know there we go how many years have you been working on snow bear now and how uh, did you i think come 20, up with 25 the idea years for it? 25 years now? <laughs> it's been a long time. Some days it feels like it. Feels like it's been forever. Indeed. Feels like. That song wouldn't make sense. What's that? So that song wouldn't make sense. I was going to sing a song, and I was like, that wouldn't make sense in the Snow Bear reference. <laughs> there we go. There we go. You can see that. Now let's get... I'm going to lock his legs right out. He's kidding about animating on it for 25 years, by the way. <laughs> Some people thought you were serious. Oh, no. no, no, no. I'm kidding. I've, we've been on it for uh, three years, four, four years. We've had, right. the we've had the concept for four years. Yeah, I mean, we haven't been working on it actively. No, we haven't years. been working on it actively. It, it's really, I mean, we went a couple years and never touched it. Yep. So um, this is the last several months has been the most we've worked on it in any single shot. Yep. Sorry, my humor is non-existent. <laughs> when you draw the body of the bear, do you think of human or animal movement of... Uh... I think of both. And th that's one of the great things about a bear is that they're very human-like in their build. See that body turn? We turn off the light box again. See there? Now we're going to have them flop right into the snow, just right.
They're getting looser and looser. You can see me trying to find, I'm trying to feel, feel the, the movement. So I'm trying. Harder and harder to uh, just get it. You know, my talking, I'm losing my talking. Words no worky. Words no worky. <laughs> Words get brokey. Caitlin on YouTube says, on the TV Paint website, it says that they added the default eraser brush in the brush panel. Not sure if the default brush is just using your drawing brush due to the change, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. They, they added what now? The eraser is in the brush panel. Oh, over here? That's what they're saying, so I don't know. That's interesting. The eraser is in the brush panel. They added a default eraser brush in the brush panel. I didn't know that. Chalks, nature, painting brushes, pencils, pens, tools, tools, presets. I don't see an eraser unless that's an eraser. Putty rubber eraser. I wonder if I if I were to click on that for my eraser. Oh, it doesn't do. Oh, I see. And then if I go back, oh, I'm still on the eraser. Yeah, that's the thing. If it's a brush, then it's gonna be. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I can't. I can't figure it out. We'll look into it. I'm sure there's a way to do it. That's the thing I was trying to. I just can't figure it out. All right, so now I want to get a little stretch with the back legs because he's just falling straight down. Right into the snow. Getting close, you guys. Almost there. Almost there. Stay on target. I'm just jumping over to ones, thinking I just think that's what we're going to need. up now this is a key too. you know when you're animating and you're getting to those last couple of drawings and you know you're like oh I can just scribble these out don't fall into scribbling them out because they're gonna stand out you'll see the scribbles have you ever done animation for gaming you know back in the 90s I did some for uh, Sega Sega and Super Nintendo and Super Nintendo he, he did the Aladdin game and the Lion King game, the main characters. So, those were very popular games. There was a bunch of us at the studio that worked on that. It was fun. Yeah. 
should try to draw our super lobby in a future stream. Yeah. Could I, you draw them if you? No, I can't. I I, I drew my, my super lobby literally thirty years ago for a couple of jobs. I'd have a hard time remembering how to do it. So there we go. He's landing in the snow. He's all bunched up. Gut up here. Get the all the paws to stretch a little bit. See that? Whee. It feels pretty good. The physics feel good. But you remember, I mean, we really spent a lot trying to get that those straights. Look at some of these drawings. But when it, when it plays at speed, oh, something went backwards there. See that? Oh, I got to fix that. There we go. Boom, yay, plop. Let's get the let's get this done. Close his eyes. Not that you're going to see it. Snow is kind of blowing up here. Blowing up here, there, everywhere. People are saying, Geronimo! Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Geronimo! I was going to ask you, would the bear bounce a little bit when it hit the snow, depending on its weight? No, he's going right into the big fluff. He's literally just going to disappear into the fluff. I'm just drawing this in very quickly. Getting a little out of proportion, but that's okay because it's gonna he's gonna disappear right into this hole.
When you were still handy, uh, excuse me, when you were still handling new hires, what did someone put in their portfolio that you were really impressed by at Disney? You know, I don't think anyone ever did anything because we, we really just looked at figure drawings and animal drawings. Um, and it was, it was actually pretty rare that we got really great animal drawings. Um, we get a lot of good figure drawings, but it's surprising how many people really don't draw animals that much. And so uh, I was always really excited to find um, other animal artists. Ronnie Williford was one of those portfolios. I remember when Ronnie's portfolio came through, it got handed around because, you know, no one had really seen a portfolio that good in a long time. And uh, everyone was like, who is this guy? Uh, it was really cool. Is the snow going to splash like water? No, it's just going to, it really wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, I'm going to get a couple of chunks, but it really wouldn't splash because that's not the way snow works. It literally is just going to make a hole. I'm going to have that hold on that. Actually, I'm going to copy that. Put the kit into a hole. Copy that. Someone says, ah, he's getting sucked into another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> a new animal there. There we go. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to paste it. Will uh, Ronnie or Manny be on the uh, future live stream soon? Or on a future uh, yes. Soon? Why, yes. Yeah, it's going to be uh, Manny, isn't it? Well, we're going to see Manny in Africa. Oh, right. Yeah, so definitely. You see might him. see him on a stream anytime in the next two weeks. Well, I'm just faking some of the snow coming up. Hello from Florida. I remember going to your live class a couple years ago. Right on. I'm assuming that was the one in Orlando. That's Someone a... asked if we were doing more live events. That's uh, in addition to the Northeast where we want to do another one there at that theater in Orlando. We had a great time there. Yeah, we did. They were really good to work with. Oh, shoot. I guess I didn't. Let me come back up here. Just really quickly, just showing some of the snow falling. Having it dissipate. Glenn Dewis is on here. Glenn Dewis? He's on YouTube. He says, hey fellas, hi from Devon, UK. Oh, man, I wish we were there. We're going to come see you soon. Yeah, it's time. It is time. It is time. 
All right, let's see. Let's see here. Let's see what kind of damage we've done. If anybody doesn't know who Glenn Dewis is, he's watching on YouTube right now. Check out glennduis.com. He's an one amazing of, one photographer. One of the best photographers you'll ever meet. And he's also got awesome books on photography, Photoshop. Photoshop. Photography. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's amazing. Oh, thank you. Glenn, <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Dewis, G-L-Y-N-D-E-W-I-S. Dakar. Dakar. He says he holds us to that visit. <laughs> Will you bless the range for us, please? <laughs> Down in Africa. Oh, the song's already on my phone, ready to go. Oh, boy. We only played it like 20 times the last trip. All right, I'm going to change a little bit of timing. I think we can beat that record. <laughs> See if we can do it like that. Let's see what it looks like. Well, Marm Burgers, we got a new no, that's too interesting fast. question. Too fast. A question nobody ever asked on a live stream before. What was there first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> there it is. There's a little leap into the oblivion. I still feel like, oh, I think I had it right the first time. Some of the spacing got a little bit off, so the physics feel a little bit forced at the end. Uh, maybe I need to go the other way. Let me try something else here. Let me try making one more drawing held for twos. Oh, I can feel that one skip there, too. I think I had it right the first time. You think so? I think so. I wish we could play this bigger. But there he is. There he's coming up to the edge and making his little leap into into the into the snow. Let's do this real quick. One more thing. Hold that a little. Whoa, not that many. Uh, hold it for 32. There he goes. And there was a little hole in the ground. But there you go, folks. Just remember, you want, to, you want everything to, to move in arcs, your smooth arcs. Think about the physics. You know, when trying to get his back end underneath him in a believable way, I had to think about what happens from a physics standpoint to do that. Because his head was really driving, I had to transfer the energy from his head down to the lower part of his body. And so in, in order to do that, you have to slow down one part and speed up the other so that they kind of meet in the middle from a physics standpoint. There we go. So that was uh, two, uh, two and a half hours of animation to get him to leap into the snow. And we got eight minutes of animation that we got to do on Snow Bear. <laughs> fun. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, think about your anticipations. You can see him kind of gathering up that energy at the edge of the, uh, the, the bank embankment there before he leaps. Also, um, uh, We've got a couple of sales going on that Nick's going to tell you about right now. <laughs> yeah, if you head on over to creatureartteacher.com slash lightbox, uh, we've got some special sales on a, a couple of our courses. Our How to Paint Light course is 50% off. Our Acting for Animation course is 50% off. If you use promo code LBX20, that's LBX20, you can get 20% uh, off any order, so any brush or anything, any other courses that might not be listed there, uh, membership, stuff like that. And then uh, we've got four brand new signed and numbered limited edition prints that went on sale today. So uh, those usually sell out. So if you're interested in getting something, uh, get it while you can, because uh, once they're gone, they're gone forever. So um, check it out. It's creatureartteacher.com slash lightbox. 
And uh, we're going to have two more streams uh, tomorrow and Sunday. So we've got a new video debuting tomorrow where Aaron's going to be uh, demoing uh, some tips on how to paint light, which kind of goes along with that how to paint light course being 50% off. And also on Sunday, uh, he's doing more snow bear animation, but this time in Procreate. And that's going to be uh, over on Procreate's channel. Or you can watch it uh, embedded on our page at creatureartteacher.com slash lightbox. There you go. Couldn't have said it better myself. Actually, couldn't have said it. <laughs> <laughs> so there he goes. I hope you guys had a good time today. I had a blast. And uh, once again, I want to thank Bobby Chu and the whole gang over at Lightbox and Schoolism for putting this on and really giving all of us other artists an opportunity to see you guys during this time of COVID. Um, you guys are pretty hero heroic for being able to uh, provide that for everybody. So thank you so much, uh, you guys. We really appreciate it. And um, the next time we talk to you guys, we'll be, uh, hopefully, if we, we can talk to you from Kenya, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun if we're able to do that. But worst, worst case scenario, if we don't, we'll be coming back uh, in a few weeks and we will be showing you um, our experiences, which will be really cool. And speaking of Lightbox real quick, uh, also be sure, I know they were having some problems earlier today, but be sure to check out lightboxexpo.com because there's a complete list of all the events going on over the next two or three days. And I mean, there's hundreds of artists and videos and workshops people are participating so definitely be sure to check out everybody else's stuff and uh if you discovered us through there discovered aaron through there for the first time today uh let us know and um uh come on back we're usually here every friday at 1 p.m eastern yep that's right what he said i agree 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. so anyway uh have a great couple of weeks you guys um we will be back soon uh, in uh, probably three weeks from now. Uh, we'll see you again uh, right back here. Uh, have a great couple of weeks. Go out there, put some beauty back into the world. Be safe, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Later. <laughs>